How's it going, everybody? You found Intunist, and welcome to another top 10, 5, list. Before we start the list, though, there are a couple of things I gotta say first. First and foremost, thank you so much to Daryl Orocho for suggesting this list idea to me. Thank you again so much, Daryl. Shoutouts to you. I hope you enjoy the video. As for the subject matter of the list, these are the top five most balanced Super Smash Bros. characters across all four games. These are characters who don't particularly excel at anything, but can excel at a high competitive level if the character is in the right hands. Now you might say that's just the definition of like a mid-tier or something, but this list is going to be going deeper than the actual just tier placement of the characters. I'm gonna be telling you guys how balanced these characters are, not solely by their place on the tier list, but more so of the fact of what these characters are capable of, based primarily on how they were designed. And lastly, and I hate to pull a zero here guys, but please remember that everything in this video is just my opinion. It really is just my opinion, and I'm just some dude on the internet who likes to play a children's video game competitively and then make videos about it. So please, if you see something in the video that you disagree with, don't freak out about it. There's really nothing to freak out about. However, if you do see something in the video that is factually inaccurate, then please point it out to me, because I don't want to be spewing, like, false information anywhere. I do do my research before making my vids, but hey, I mean, I'm just a human being. Sometimes I can be wrong. Right? Am I allowed to be wrong on the internet? No? Oh, I'm not? Fuck. I, I'm not allowed to be wrong on the internet. I should stop making this video then. Right, peace out, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Whew! Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get started with the list. Alright. I know a lot of you are already turning off the video right now, all like, What? Falcon? Really? He's better than balanced, he's one of the best characters in Melee, and, well, he is. But please just hear me out first. Falcon is a remarkable character, yes. I should know, I main him in Melee. Well, at least I used to, I'm kinda going through a character crisis in that game, but regardless, I see him not solely as a high tier in Melee, but more so as a balanced character. Let's take a look at Falcon's attributes. He has a great combo game, with a lot of stringy combos that can lead into death. He's the fastest character in the entire game, which combined with his fantastic aerials and tech chasing ability make his neutral game very solid. And he is absolutely no stranger to kill power, possessing fantastically strong kill moves such as the Knee of Justice, the People's Elbow, the Stomp of Legends, and although this move is primarily used for styling, the Falcon Punch. So some of you might be thinking, okay, well, what's wrong with him? He's remarkably strong, he's incredibly fast in almost every sense of the word, he has a great combo game, plus combo finishers which can easily kill, so what's the problem? Primarily, his recovery. His recovery is incredibly predictable and limited in options regardless of how the move ends. If he misses the ledge, he dies, and if he lands on stage, he has lag, making it extremely punishable not only against the higher tier characters. Pretty much any character trying the ledge hog Falcon who's just sitting on the ledge waiting for him to go on the stage can punish him for when he lands back on stage. Falcon's recovery is predictable enough to the point where characters miles below on the tier list can easily edgeguard him, making his recovery one of the easiest to edgeguard in the game. He is also a fast faller, which is very bad against the higher tier characters as he becomes very susceptible to juggling against characters like Fox and Falco, the latter of which arguably being Falcon's worst matchup and very susceptible to Jigglypuff's up throw to rest. Captain Falcon is total combo food, even against characters like Mewtwo, who is not considered to be one of the game's better characters. Last but not least, he lacks a projectile, meaning that if he wants to cause damage, he sometimes has to hard commit to an approach option, such as approaching Nair or Dare, which in a lot of cases can be predicted, read, and punished. Despite these bad attributes though, Captain Falcon still has plenty of good attributes as well, and they still make Captain Falcon an incredibly solid character with a good matchup spread, and at the end of the day, makes him a very balanced character. Now, this is one of the only two instances where there will be more than one character filling the same spot on the list. Pit is one of the most balanced characters in all of Smash in my opinion, and since Dark Pit is literally the exact same character just with some very slight and insignificant differences, he shares this spot with Pit on the list. The reason I put Pit and Dark Pit on this list is because they as characters have just about everything a character really needs, and most of these things that they do have isn't really amazing or poor, rather it's just moderate. 
They have a decent combo game, able to strew along a couple of hits off of a grab to gain good damage. They aren't particularly fast or slow, rather they just have a moderate dash speed, and they are almost in the complete center of the list in terms of their weight. In almost every attribute, they are simply just moderate characters. Nothing too strong and nothing too weak. Which, when it comes to fighting games, is pretty much what the definition of balance is. Even Kurgain Hammer, one of the most accurate, respected, and cited sources of Smash 4 information, categorizes Pit and Dark Pit as all-rounders. They also have good kill power in their forward throws, their forward smash, and their forward Bs, albeit that one more so leaning towards Dark Pit. And to top it all off, they have a pretty good projectile in the bow as well. This move not only being able to be used to tack on good damage, but also to gimp opponents far off the stage, albeit that's more of a good trait for Pit. The reason I rank them so low on this list though, is because they do have one very good trait. Their recovery. Pit and Dark Pit not only possess multiple jumps, but also an up that travels incredible distance, making them less susceptible to being edge guarded and stage spiked as they can recover from a very long distance. But at the end of the day, even their recovery is susceptible to a lot of things. We talked about the angels, it's only right that we talk about the goddess too. A lot of you are probably already wondering why I put Palutena on this list. Some of you are probably saying, what? She sucks, why would you put her on this list, you dumb fucking kid? Well, to those people and to those who still argue that Palutena is a bad character, I say this. I think you're living in the past. I think Palutena, battling her way along the raging, developing meta that is Smash 4, has proved herself at the very least, and probably the very best as well, to be a mid-tier. I personally have a lot of experience with Palutena, as I've been playing her alongside Mario for a very long time now, as I'm a huge fan of Kid Icarus Uprising, and she was my favorite character in that game. Her being my favorite obviously isn't enough justification to say she's one of Smash's most balanced characters, so let me explain my reasoning now. Palutena, amongst her moveset, has about a 50-50 split of good moves and bad moves spread across it. What I mean is that for just about every good move she has, she has a bad one to counter it as well. For example, her jab is fantastic. Single hit combos into grab, which leads into Palutena's down throw, which combos into one of her aerials, which are all good moves, by the way, at almost any percent. Jab is also a multi-hit, which is great at getting opponents away from you reliably. To counter this, though, her ground moves are mostly pretty bad. Her tilts are terrible. They all have intense ending lag if you miss, which in a lot of situations you will if you use these moves, because they have a lot of startup as well. Her up tilt is at best a very situational move, with the opponent pretty much having to be above you for it to connect. If you do manage to connect it, however, it can kill if your opponent is at high enough percents. Her smash attacks are all strong, but they are all also laggy, with lots of end lag in particular if you miss, meaning that much like her tilts, she can get hard punished if she misses. Her up smash is, again, the best out of the three moves, as it covers extremely long range for a smash attack and stays active for the longest amount of time. Plus, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe it has the least amount of end lag out of her smash attacks too. But what Palutena makes up for in her lack of ground game, however, is a great aerial game. Like I said earlier, Palutena has a follow-up out of her down throw at pretty much every realistic percent. If the opponent DIs away, they get hit by fair, if they don't DI at all, they get hit by nair, and if they DI in, they get hit by up air, which can be a potentially fatal true combo, as up air is one of Palutena's strongest kill moves. Her neutral air, once landed, can potentially combo into another neutral air, or an up air, which are both great damage racking moves. Her nair, when properly utilized as well, can also be used as a wicked edge guarding tool. Now some may fight with me on these points, saying that her aerials aren't actually very good. But I hate to break it to you, but if you think Palutena's aerials are bad, then you either don't fundamentally understand the character, or simply put are being too quick to judge. Or just simply aren't playing the character right. I say this because people may make the case that her aerials all have high ending lag, and, well, they would be right. They all do. Especially her back air, because despite how quick that move comes out, it has surprisingly high ending lag. But what they don't have is landing lag out of a short hop fastfall. Proper utilization of Palutena's aerials led her to become a footsie slash half grappler, because the way you're supposed to play Palu is by properly spacing her fair and back air, the latter of which makes her body partly invincible and outprioritizes a crap ton of attacks, and attempting to auto-cancel those moves in the neutral. That's the footsies part. Afterward, Palutena has to look for a grab to begin her infamous down throw combos, which she can easily get upon the auto-canceling of a short hop fastfall forwarder. And that's where the half grappler part comes in. 
Even her down air in some situations can be used as a good out of shield option, so all of her aerials are useful. So in conclusion, her aerials and grab game are fantastic, while her ground and smash attacks are not. Which is why I think Palutena is a very balanced character. And here we have the Boxer. Hailing from one of my favorite Nintendo games is Little Mac, and I think he's one of Smash's most balanced characters. My logic behind this is virtually the same as my logic for Palutena, but with Mac, it's not just about his moveset. Rather, more so, it's about how the character was designed. Little Mac to this day is likely the best character on the ground. His ground attacks are amazing, especially his smash attacks as they all have super armor for a couple of frames, plus are incredibly strong moves with fantastic knockback, making them not only very versatile attacks, but also very safe. And his tilts are also very quick and powerful as well. But, as you all know, once you get Little Mac in the air, he's done. He has, without possibly any room for debate at this point, the worst aerials in the whole game. They cause no knockback, cannot kill at any percent, and do laughable amounts of damage. The only aerial he has that is really legitimately useful is his down air because it resets. And arguably his forward air because you can use his forward air in some mid combo strings. And I suppose you could kinda argue that his neutral air is a good move because of the footstool setup he has on heavies, but that's only on heavies, so it really doesn't make up for how bad it is in like every other situation. He also has the worst recovery in the game, making Max air game truly that much worse. You know, it only just dawned on me as I'm saying this now, but when you think about it, Mac, in terms of moveset, is like the polar opposite of Palutena. All of his ground moves are amazing, while his aerials are all terrible. So yeah, I think you see where I'm going with this. His moveset was virtually split in half, sort of like how Palutena's was, but in the exact opposite way. Little Mac was deliberately designed to be played in one way. And the way Nintendo balanced Mac to try and ensure that players understood the fact and played Little Mac that way was by making him incredibly strong in one aspect and incredibly weak in another. And if that's not balance, I'm not sure what is. You know, this only makes sense that Mario gets this spot, to be honest. He's Nintendo's flagship character! And in the early days of Smash, Nintendo's ideology was that their mascot should be the most balanced and or the beginner character, if you will. Until Brawl came out and Nintendo stopped caring and made him one of the worst characters in the game. And then until Smash 4 came out, Nintendo really stopped caring and made him broken as fuck. But anyway, in the early Smash Brothers games, much like in just about every single Mario sports games, Mario was cast as the all-rounder character. He was actually always designed to be the all-rounder character, and in each Smash game, you can play as him that way to an extent, but in Brawl and Smash 4, Nintendo kind of failed to make Mario this way, as he wound up becoming a bottom tier and a top tier in Brawl and Smash 4 respectively, which is why I included the version of Mario only from the first two games, in which he is a low mid to high low tier. All of his attributes are virtually even in both games, but we're gonna talk about 64 first, as this is especially true for this game. In 64, he's literally decent or moderate at everything. He is average weight, average size, and his falling speed is in between that of a fast faller and a floaty character. He has a good combo game too, possessing combos good enough to compete at a competitive level while still not having an exceptional combo game as amazing as, say, Pikachu's or Captain Falcon's. He even has good KO power and a good vertical recovery, the latter of which actually possessing more options than it looks, such as stalling your up B to wait out your opponent's ledge invincibility, and even using his fireballs to rain damage on your opponents below, forcing them to react to the fireballs and paving the way for Mario to safely get back to stage. Despite all of his good attributes though, the character does have some drawbacks. Such as Mario in every Smash game, one of his biggest, if not his biggest weakness, is his lack of range. And even though Marth isn't playable in Smash 64, thank god, this is still quite the problem for Mario, as it means he can be outcamped and outspaced easily by characters with superior range and disjoints than him, such as Kirby with his up tilt. He also does not have cape in this game, as in Smash 64 there are no side special moves, meaning he lacks a good method of dealing with projectiles, which, ironically, is one of his biggest strengths in future games. He also, compared to most of the characters above him, has poor mobility, making it harder for Mario to keep up in the neutral with the likes of, say, Pikachu, Fox, or Falcon. Some of his attacks are also rather on the slow side, especially his up smash, which has tremendous ending lag. Yep. Those were the Dark Ages, weren't they? Moving on to Melee! 
Mario in this game wasn't changed very much, as he was still designed to be, and still is, the all-rounder character in it. However, the vast changes in mechanics from 64 to Melee did take a slight toll on Mario, making him a weaker character in Melee than his 64 counterpart. Overall though, when it comes to attributes, he's still smack dab in the middle. Some of these attributes are his weight, his falling speed, his air speed, his size, and even his dash speed. Much like in 64, he has a good combo ability, arguably being better than his 64 counterpart due to up and down throws now being a thing, as these throws are Mario's main combo starters, and chain grabbing becoming a mechanic, which led Mario to possess a chain grab over characters way above him on the tier list, namely Fox, Falco, and Captain Falcon specifically. Another big advantage he has over his 64 counterpart would be his superior movement. His superior movement is of course mainly in part to Melee having the best and most versatile movement options across all the Smash games, but Mario's better movement isn't only because he could wave dash now. It's also because his wave dash was really good. Like I said before, Mario has average falling speed, but what I did not mention was that he also has average traction. These two elements combined gave Mario a long wave dash, which gave him good approach options, as well as offstage options as well, such as reverse wave land back air to edge guard. Speaking of which, Mario is also very good at edge guarding. This not only is because of his back air, which can deal with far off stage opponents with the clean hit, and low recovering opponents with the late hit, which can be set up out of both his forward and back throws, making Mario's grab game also very good, but also because of one major tool. His cape. Mario's cape is not only fantastic at reflecting projectiles, but it's an amazing tool for edge guarding in melee as well, as it can turn around opponents stuck in freefall trying to grab the ledge, it can gimp far out opponents, and arguably, and most notably, reverse Fox and Falco's uppies as well as Captain Falcon's linear uppie. It is easily one of the best edge guarding tools in the game, and can easily gimp a number of recoveries in the game as well, especially the more linear ones such as Falcon's uppie and Luigi's side B. But of course, the character cannot be considered balanced unless he has some bad attributes to counter his good ones, so let's start talking about those. His kill power, for the most part, is lacking. His up smash does not have humongous landing lag anymore, but it's not nearly as powerful as it was in 64. It can still be used to kill at very high percents, of course, but it's not as reliable a killing tool as it used to be. He has a kill throw in his back throw, but this requires Mario to get a grab, and despite having fantastic follow-ups and gimp setups off of a grab, his grab range itself isn't very good. So using back throw as a kill option can be pretty unreliable in some situations, especially against characters who are better at mixing up their neutral options than Mario, and especially against characters that outrange him, particularly Marth. His Meteor Smash can be Meteor cancelled around low to mid percents, plus it's a much more laggy move with huge ending lag especially, so his forward air not only is much worse in melee than it was in 64, but it's also arguably one of the worst forward airs in the game. He does however have fantastic range and kill power in his forward smash, which combined with his good wave dash give him one of the best wave smashes in the game. Oh my god! Oh my god! Can we go home now? Mario in melee also does not have the best recovery. This is very ironic, because in 64, he actually had less recovery options due to the lack of side B stalling, due to the lack of... Well, side Bs. But in Melee, his up B travels much less vertical and horizontal distance, and even does less damage. That plus his down B can only travel vertical distance, and you gotta mash, like, fuck to do that. He does have his cape now, though, which in the air lets him gain slight height and stall in the air for a little bit. Plus, Mario can wall jump now, which is especially useful on stages like Fountain of Dreams and Final Destination. His recovery though, compared to characters like Fox and Puff and Pikachu, simply isn't very good, as Mario has to put in a lot more work to recover, often for much less reward. All in all though, the character has both good and bad attributes, leveled out evenly enough to be considered a pretty balanced character. And there you have it, everybody, the top five most balanced Super Smash Bros. characters spread across all four games. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like down below. Uh, comment down below what your top five most balanced Super Smash Bros. characters are, or your top ten if you're feeling ambitious. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps me out so much more than you know just to hit that little red button down there, and it would mean the absolute world to me. My name is Intunist. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again so, so much for watching, and I will gladly see you next time. Take care.